this lesson, we're going to cover triggers and cravings. And it's important to know that cravings are multifactorial. They're not just behavioral um, and they're not just brain chemistry based. So this course really, I try to cover from all aspects and all angles. Um, this lesson is about the behaviors of cravings. Um, you know, what triggers us, what cues are out there, and how to become more aware of your environment so that you can better respond to your environment. Um, when you are in active addiction with alcohol use disorder, the stop function in your brain is weak because we are craving high levels of dopamine and there's a high reward for our behavior, which is drinking. So we lose the ability to control ourselves. Um, it's compromised. It's not gone, it's just compromised. And recognizing that you're dealing with a little bit of a brain deficit there will help you choose different behaviors and be aware of the triggers in your environment. So this exercise, um, we're just gonna um, identify, I'm gonna have you identify what your triggers are. Um, and hopefully it'll allow you to really go broad and deep in terms of what makes you want to drink so that you can interrupt that process. One of the most valuable tools that I had, I think from day one, somebody said something that really clicked for me, and that is to play the tape forward. So for me, all of the beliefs that I had about alcohol that I needed it to relax, that I, when I felt stress, it would help, that it helped me sleep, that it helped me feel more connected. All of those things, those were beliefs that took time to dissipate. However, um, in the early days, the way I was able to override those beliefs was to play the tape forward. So for example, um, you know, happy hour comes around and maybe people, my family is drinking and I'm tempted, you know, I'm like, oh, you know, I could just have one or two. And very early on, I was able to say, okay, all right, let's play that tape forward. What would happen if you had one or two? And what I was able to, to identify for myself is that my biggest dopamine hit was really not the potential in the first pour. It wasn't even necessarily the first taste. And then what would happen very quickly is I would start to feel really tired. For me, exhaustion was one of the um, tipping point factors that allowed me to say, I, this isn't working for me. You know, I don't, I don't know what else the problem is, but I'm just too exhausted. I'm too tired to even drink. And so I would play the tape forward. If I had one drink, I would start to feel tired. How would I cope with that? Have another drink and then ultimately probably have more to drink than I wanted. I wouldn't sleep well. I'd wake up tomorrow in the same damn rut that I had been in. And that gave me a lot of power, just playing the tape. So as you go through this exercise, we're gonna talk about um, what your triggers are, uh, what the subtle triggers are, so you're gonna go even deeper, and then what you can tell yourself in a very matter-of-fact way to kind of work around those triggers and then also we're going to go through the past and see um, in the past when have you been able to resist and what tools did you use you know if you're anything like i was um, not very often but sometimes i was able to you know stop drinking for short periods of time and i for me one of the things i remember was i would tell myself it's like first thing when i wake up oh, i love not having a hangover. I love not waking up with that shrew inside my head telling me everything I did wrong and wondering about all the things that I might have said and piecing together the information from the night before. So, um, you know, just remembering in the in the past, what I was able to do is, is think about how I would feel. Um, I also remember telling myself, you know, if I found the strength to skip the happy hour and maybe watch a movie or something. While I was watching the movie, I would just really think like, oh, I feel so good right now that I'm not drinking. Um, so 
I don't really even know how to language those, but those were, for me, the way I was able to resist in the past. And again, it, it didn't happen very often, but there was some success there. So it's important to build on the success and things that have worked for you in the past. And then also the exercise ends with brainstorming um, of some additional strategies. So take your time with this exercise and uh, I'll see you on the next lesson.